point. The shot, not good, and there is a foul, and that puts UTEP on the free throw line with one and one to win the basketball game. This is Campbell. As he raises the ball to shoot, a paper cup flies past his face. The shot, not good. The battle for the rebound, and there is a whistle. Jimmy Clark rules fan interference, puts Campbell on the line once again, and he makes both free throws, and UTEP wins the ball game by a score of 71-70. Stand by for a replay of that game today, minus the paper cup. Conference basketball today from the Special Events Center on the campus of Texas El Paso, the Lobos of New Mexico versus the UTEP Miners. Today's game brought to you in part by Smith's. For savings and service, we are the one. And by Clover Club, the little company with a big tradition of quality. Good afternoon, everybody. Bill Howard along with Carl Arkey. No game in the history of this long, wonderful series between UTEP and New Mexico will be remembered with more chagrin on one part and uh, happiness on the other part than the Paper Cup game of a week ago, Carl Arkey. No doubt about it, Bill. These two schools, they've been going at it since 1929. In fact, today will be the 100th meeting between these two schools on the basketball floor. New Mexico leads it 52 to 47 as you take a look at the uh, standings down through the years. But I've got a feeling this is going to be the most intense tense game that maybe they have ever had. Gary Colson said after the now infamous cup caper that it was the most devastating loss that he has ever suffered in his entire life. Said his kids handled it better than he did. So I've got a feeling that maybe today here in the Special Events Center they're going to turn up the intensity, turn up the heat, maybe another 25, 50 degrees. Pressure, 10 cents a ton. We'll be back with the starting lineups for today's very exciting whack game right after we take time out for this. Innings in the whack. There you have it. A tie. UTEP, BYU. Wyoming 5 to half game out. Then on down the line, New Mexico. And then, of course, San Diego State, Utah, Colorado State, Air Force, and Hawaii. And the standings for a very exciting basketball season. We are standing by for the introduction of the starting lineups, and uh, we'll have them for you in just uh, a moment. Uh, UTEP with an overall record of 17 and 3, New Mexico with an overall record of 13 and 7. Should be a very good basketball game this afternoon. People in this city have been looking forward to it. Fans have come over from Albuquerque. We have a sellout. Let's go to the starting lineups. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Special Event Center in El Paso, Texas. Here are the starting lineups for this afternoon's ball game between New Mexico and the 14th ranked UTEP Miners. Starting at guard, the University of New Mexico, a 6'1 junior out of Washington, D.C., averaging nine points per game, Kelvin Scarborough. At guard for the Miners, a 6'1 junior out of Gardena, California, averaging seven points per game, Jeep Jackson. At the other guard position for New Mexico, a 6'1 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, averaging four points per game, Paul Lawson. In the backcourt this afternoon for the Miners, a 6'7 senior from New Orleans, Louisiana, averaging 13 points per game, Juden Smith. Up front for New Mexico at center, a 6'9 sophomore from Los Angeles, California, comes in averaging 11 points per game, Sean Brooks. And at center for the Miners, a 6'11 senior from Tucson, Arizona, averaging 15 points per game, Dave Feidel. In the front court for the Lobos, a 6'8 junior from Albuquerque, New Mexico, averaging six points per game, Mike Withers. At forward for UTEP, a 6'7 junior from New Orleans, Louisiana, five points per game average, Wayne Campbell. 
up front. For the Lobos, a 6'6 senior from Los Angeles, California, comes in averaging 19 points per game, Johnny Brown. And up front, for the Miners, a 6'9 junior from Philadelphia, averaging seven points per game, Mike Richmond. Those are the starting lineups for this afternoon's ball game. Now, the two coaches, of course, are very successful in their field. This is Gary Colson on the screen. He has in that sack a paper cup, which he is giving to the bear, Don Haskins. And I think that is a gesture of goodwill. Obviously, Colson extremely disappointed at last week's uh, uh, episode. We'll be back with the opening tip right after this important word. Basketball game this afternoon as they line up at center circle. And Brooks is starting today's game. We understand he has been just a little bit under the weather. The tap will be controlled by the Lobos of New Mexico. And let's see who draws first blood in this ball game. Lawson with the ball. Winter back into the corner. Lawson has a shot, doesn't take it. They want to get closer than that. From the corner, the shot by Winter's not good. Rebound. Brown, good offensive rebounder. If there is a complaint that Haskins has with his ball club, Bill, it's that they're not an overpowering rebounding team. Both will control the ball well. You'll not see a lot of turnovers today. Brooks with a drive, draws a whistle and a foul. Foul already, and it gives us a chance to introduce our officials for this afternoon's game. They are Gordon Burke, Dave Hall, and Ed Ristow. We'll see it once again as Sean Brooks, who we were told had a strep throat and might not even play today, is starting, tries to take it inside. Feidel comes over the top, and I think the foul is going to be on Campbell that time. On the line, Brooks. Seven blocks this year, by the way. The number one block man is uh, Robert Leffel, the seven-footer on the bench yet. He'll come in. He has 23 for the year. Brooks makes one of two. It's a one-to-nothing ball game. And the Miners will go to work backcourt. Jeep Jackson will be working uh, backcourt with Juden Smith. Man-for-man -man defense used by the Lobos. Makes for a good-looking basketball game. Pass, pass. They set up. Richmond had a great game last week. Young man from Philadelphia. Final is high. Swings it over. Campbell, the hero of last week's game with those free throws. This is Juden Smith. Very patient ball club. Watch him work and work well without the basketball, Carl Arkey. That is a trademark of this UTEP team. So patient. Good so shot selection, and it's a reflection of their coach, Don Haskins. Final with a shot. Air ball with seven seconds to go in the shot clock. Lobos down the other way. Scarborough out of Washington, D.C. Cross court, we set up with Winters. Remember Hunter Green? He's injured this year. He is redshirted. He'll be around next year. He'll That's why here. they look to go inside, Bill. That's Brown. Shot not good. Rebound ripped out of there by the Lobos. Richmond got it, the left-hander, and the Lobos are coming down to the attack zone. Nice pass by the Jeep. Shot not good by Richmond. Rebound taken out of there by Winters, and the Lobos are going the other way. No call. One to nothing ball game. Just getting underway in the first half. Nice drive in the lane. Cross court heave ends up on the bench. Out of bounds. Turnover. You mentioned Hunter Green being out this year and not being able to play. That's why they look to go inside so much. And there's some disagreement here already with the Bear. Oh, the Bear is upset. That's one bear that is never in hibernation. <laughs> what an amazing story. This is his 25th year here at UTEP, and they're giving the basketball back to New Mexico. Ten of those years have resulted in 20 victory or more seasons. 20 or more. And, of course, an NCAA champion with uh, Texas Western back in the year 1966. Scarborough can't penetrate. Winters looks inside. Nobody available there. Brown, Scarborough from the corner. He hits it for two. That ought to give him some confidence, Bill. Scar has had some trouble shooting the basketball this year. 3-0 with the Lobos out front as Feidel tries to answer the challenge and does. Nice shot off the glass. He's been somewhat inconsistent during his career up and down, but I think he's only failed to score in double figures in two of the last 28 games he's played in. 
3-2 scores. Scarborough drives and scores again. He has four in the ball game, and he is shot is back. It was on vacation. And they're putting pressure in the backcourt on Hernell Jeep Jackson, who's not really a true point guard. He was an off guard that they converted. They got a youngster who's a freshman from Chicago who will be a point guard of the future. His name is Hardaway. This is the Jeep outside, Jeep Jackson. Euphonious name. Set up with Feidel high, guarded by Winters, bounce pass, ends up in the hands now of Campbell, now back again to uh, number 22, Chief Jackson from California. They move it quickly, the shot clock will just kind of tick away. Here's the shot from outside, off the inside of the iron, now good, Scarborough retrieves the ball. Lobos going the other way, the team in red. Got by his man, a block, and we have an offensive foul. Number 11 picks up the offensive foul. Scarborough coming down, trying to make something happen, goes right into the defensive man who had the position and draws the foul that time for charging. That is number one on Kelvin Scarborough and uh, one team foul on both of these schools. Lem Clanton checks into the lineup. Lem Clanton is from the state of Louisiana. All right, in front of us, Jeep Jackson swings it into the corner to Juden Smith, veteran ball player and a good one too. An all-whack candidate without question this year. Baseline, fight for the ball, and a steal. Does he control? It is knocked out of bounds, and it will be given to New Mexico. Backcourt, they'll play it in and go to work. And I believe it was Brown who triggered the whole thing. And now some pressure from UTEP. A drive by Brooks. Dishes off underneath. Brown chases it down in the corner. I'm a little surprised they're still in that zone this week, Bill, because they tried it last week, and New Mexico got the ball inside effectively. 5-2 scoreboard rating with New Mexico out front of the ball game. High arching shot, not good by Brooks. And the rebound belted away, and we got a whistle, and the ball will be given to the UTEP Miners backcourt. Timeout is uh, called with timeout. We have 15.45 to go in the first half of the ball game. Scoreboard reads this break and play. New Mexico 5, UTEP 2. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network. Four. It's the Lobos 5, the Miners 2. We're about ready to get underway again, Bill. By the way, these two teams, well, I think it's been since 1981-82 season since New Mexico has beaten UTEP. It's been that long. The Miners have won eight straight. Jeep Jackson with a pass now to Juden Smith. Juden, fast pass in the lane to, oh, to Richmond, and he rings the bell. He's the guy that had the great game last week. Sure did, Bill. He had 20 points and 12 rebounds, which are career highs for Mike Richmond, and it's why he's starting today. 5-4 game, pass to the post, bell it out of bounds. And incidentally, the UTEP Miners are tough to beat on this court. Just for example, uh, this year, 13-0, and zero, they have not lost in 19 con consecutive WAC home games. Not counting the tournament now, regular season home games. And one of those wins was over Georgetown, right here in the Special Events Center. Scarborough outside working uh, with uh, Lawson. Pressure put on it by Clanton. They set up with Lawson, trying to penetrate, pass deflected into the corner, and the shot from there is good by Scarborough. He has six points already in the game. An unintentional pass, but a nice pass from Mike Richmond over to Scarborough. All right, across the timeline comes Clanton. First substitute in the game, incidentally, for the UTEP Miners. Outside, Jackson swings it over to Clanton. Clanton looks low, goes low, got Fidel open. Fidel hits it from the corner. He has four. I think he was inspired by his coach during that last timeout. Don Haskins read Fidel the riot act during that timeout, and he's come out shooting. 7-6 scoreboard reading with New Mexico out front by one point in the ball game as Johnny Brown goes to the corner to Lawson. Opposite corner, Scarborough. They're going to feed him, and that's why. They're going to have to come out on Scarborough because he's got the hot hand right now as the backcourt pressure is on. Now, Carl and I worked a couple of New Mexico games earlier this year, and he was cold in those games because his jump shot was on vacation. We have a whistle and a foul across the way. Foul is on John Brown. That's his first of the game, the second on the Lobos right there. Gary Colson didn't like it. He thought it was all ball. But then that's what you expect from the opposing coach. By the way, I thought that was a great gesture, the big paper cut before the game to Don Haskins. The coaches from these two schools have always gotten along very well, it seems. I remember one time when Haskins went down, actually sat on the bench next to Norm Ellenberger during the game. Yeah, he said, take it easy on us. That's one of those games when uh, UTEP was uh, getting hit. 
Shot is not good. Tap up is up and on the rim and good. Final will get the bucket. That's uh, six points for Final. Dave Final. Perseverance paid off that time as he just stayed on the boards. He had Richmond right there with him, by the way. Little move cross court. Finds Lawson open with a shot, and Lawson hits the outside oh, shot. Lawson. Outside shooting is doing it for New Mexico this afternoon. The backcourt is keeping New Mexico in this game. They've got a three-point lead. 11-8 scoreboard reading a steal by Lawson. Lawson with the ball on the floor. Long lead pass to Johnny Brown. Johnny Brown shot does not count. He travels. Had to. Had to. Gary Colson pleading his case, but I think it was a good call. That time he had to stop and pull up short because Jeep Jackson had gotten position. It was a good defensive play by Jeep Jackson. Gary Colson says, my man made a good play, too. <laughs> He's still uptight from last week, understandably so. Pass goes uh, outside. We set up with Jeep Jackson outside, indicating uh, what he wants right now from his... Uh, and in the middle, we got a whistle and a foul at the baseline, and it will go the other way. Foul was on Clanton that time over in the corner. Lem Clanton. As the New Mexico man tried to make his move towards the basket. He's Clanton. an interesting story, too. A walk-on here. They discovered him at a slam dunk contest in Georgia. He is 6'2", so that's unusual to be discovered in a slam dunk contest. Foul. Foul on Jeep Jackson. I think the officials are trying to let it known right here and right now that they're going to keep control of this basketball game. There has to be con some concern after what happened last week in Albuquerque. All right, Lawson with the ball sets up now with Scarborough outside. The Lobos in red, the Miners, of course, in the white uniform. Got a whistle, no whistle, the ball knocked away by the Jeep. He's fed back to the Jeep, his shot not good. We got a whistle and a foul. It'll be blown against the uh, Lobos, and Jeep Jackson will be on the line. Gary Colson is furious. He feels, first of all, that his man was fouled at the other end by Jeep Jackson, who reached around, poked it loose. Looked clean to me. Richmond on the feed. Paul Lawson comes down, does his best to stop it, but puts the body into Jeep Jackson, and it's going to be a two-shot foul as Jackson goes to the line, and Gary Colson is already getting heated up. He's warmed up. He's into the game already. Jackson from California. 7.6 scoring average this year. Misses the first shot. By the way, Bill, I didn't mean to imply that I thought the officials lost control of the game last week at Albuquerque. Just meant to say that with the cup-throwing incident, they want to control everything today. Oh. Second shot is not good. The rebound tapped into the hands of Winters, and we go to work with the Lobos in possession of the ball. Lawson skids to a stop. With a head fake, he indicates he wants somebody cutting inside. Nobody did, and about that time, ball knocked out of his hands out of bounds. It is New Mexico ball. Winners will play it in. We are 12-20 right now, first half of the ball game. 11-8 scoreboard reading with New Mexico out front. As they go to the baseline, they try to go to Brooks in the middle of the ball. He loses him out of bounds, and UTEP has the ball. So far, a rough afternoon for Sean Brooks, who had 27 last week against the Miners. So far, he's been silent this afternoon. Physically, might be a little bit below par, Carl. Clanton brings it up with uh, Jeep Jackson. Into the corner now to Feidel. Big senior center, 6'11". They go to the opposite side and set up there to Clanton, to the post, back to Clanton. Now to the high post, that is Feidel coming out to pick up the ball. And we now have 19 seconds on the shot clock as UTEP very patiently works for that good, open percentage shot, and that is it. Feidel. I'm sorry, Bill. The Lobos had to switch off that time. It's been a tough defensive assignment for the man who's got the ball right now, Mike Winters. He's been guarding Feidel all afternoon. 11-10. It's a one-point ball game. New Mexico out front by one. They've been getting their shots from outside. They'll go inside this time. No! Brooks, not good. Tap up. And no, no basket. No basket. Forget it. Fans applaud the decision. Okay. We'll take a break with 11.20 uh, to go in the first half of the game. Scoreboard reads 11, New Mexico, 10 for UTEP. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network.
Buchner's is only 6'8". He's number 24. He's going up against a guy who's 6'11". Big advantage for Dave Feidel, who's got a tremendous jump shot, one of the great offensive players in the league. Now, here's the disputed call at the other end. The ball goes up. It's bouncing around. Johnny Brown taps it in. The man underneath the basket says, it's a good basket. But the official at the top of the screen you just saw came out and said, no basket. They had to get together during the uh, commercial break and sort of sort that one out, Bill. So I was watching the official at the baseline, and I was ready to call the basket good, to tell you the truth, Carl. All right, nice penetration and a dish off of that uh, to Campbell. No basket. Offensive foul. Gary Colson comes off his seat and applauds the officials, but he was very upset during that last time out. Went out to talk and yell at the officials just a little bit. Shooting percentages so far. New Mexico shooting 63% from the floor. UTEP 50% from the floor. They're red hot. It's scorching in here. And remember, they're hitting from outside. Scarborough outside working out with winners. Can't penetrate. Uh, does with a pass, however, to Johnny Brown with a layup with a left hand. Beautiful body control and a nice shot by Johnny Brown, but 50% of that was the pass from winners. 13-10, New Mexico out front of the ball game. A fight for the ball. It's going to end up out of bounds, and it will be New Mexico ball. They created that one. Wow, uh, sorry, the pressure is starting to, to get to uh, UTEP just a little bit, just a little bit. That's uncharacteristic for them. They've only had like 21 turnovers in the past two games. Winters, angle shot, hangs not good to the floor. Picked up at the opposite side by the little guy on the floor. Shot not good. Rebound taken out of there by UTEP, and they are running. Nice dish off that time. Backhanded shot, not good. No basket. Foul had been called in the previous shot. Clanton was up with a left-hander, and boy, did we have a slam dunk on a follow-up. He was so vulnerable. That's Juden Smith looking on, but a nice move by Jeep Jackson, who goes up, dishes off to Clanton, who goes up in the air, and he gets fouled. Looked like Winters is going to get called for it. First foul on Mike Winters this afternoon. Has a great shot in your screen of Juden Smith just soaring through the air. He is a tremendous basketball player. We haven't had a chance to really see it yet this afternoon, but one of the great one-on-one -on -one players in America, probably the quickest first step of anybody in college basketball. Lem Clanton gets the first free throw. And that's the first conversion from the free throw line for UTEP. Numbers are odd, 13-11 scoreboard reading now. And if Lem hits this one, it's a one-point game, and he does. His first two of the game. All right, it is now 13-12. New Mexico out front by one. Long lead pass goes down to Lawson. Young man is a sophomore. Gets a lot of people off his feet. Fired to the opposite side to uh, Johnny Brown, who's slipping over there for some reason. He lost his shoe, Bill. That's his it. shoe came off. He got the basketball. He's, he went to make his first move towards the basket, and the thing came off his foot, got the ball up anyway, and put it in for the two. Momentary timeout for equipment. <laughs> That's as impressive as uh, that Keith Byers touchdown a couple of years ago against Illinois. The shoe came off then, and the shoe came off this time, and both of them scored. Well, I, I've heard of faking people out of their shoes, but you fake yourself out of your shoes, you got a problem. <laughs> watch it. Watch it right here. He's going to make the pass over to Brown, makes that first step, and the shoe came off. You could barely see it right there, but you could tell he slipped. The reason he slipped is because it was his sock against the wood floor. All right. At work is Clanton. Swings it outside. We got Hardaway in a ball game now. Open shot from the angle. Dead center by Juden Smith. He'll kill you outside. He'll take you inside. He does it all. He's a great defensive player. As we said, one of the great one-on-one -on -one guys. 15-14. A drive by Leffo. Block on the floor. Picked up by Johnny Brown. Ball skips out of his hands and out of bounds. It'll be given to the Miners. Tell you what, I'm impressed. Gary Colson isn't, but I'm impressed with the block by Quinton Gates on seven-foot Robert Leffel. A drive by Juden Smith. Baseline left. They swing it outside. Let's see if they'll slow down their pattern a little bit right now. They've been shooting quickly the last couple times down. High, Juden Smith from outside again. He has four. I think Juden's a little bit more involved now that they're not just sitting back in that zone, although they seem to be going back into it right now. Outside Scarborough, Lawson. Lawson guarded at the moment, uh, a moment ago, I should say, by Hardaway, the young freshman from Chicago. I asked the Bear about Hardaway. He said when he gets older, he's going to be a heck of a player. Winners, fast pass, intercepted by Campbell. Good pickoff. 
One pass too many that time. Looked like Mike Winters had a good percentage shot and he turned it down. Hardaway outside over the angle to Lim Clanton. They go low. And we set up with the Miners right now, counting down the shot clock at the 25. We have a 16-15 ball game with the Miners in front by one. Juden Smith again. This time he misses. Gets his own rebound back. Tapped around a couple of times. And it is good. Tapped in by Quentin Gates. Last week, Gates came off the bench to score 16 against New Mexico. He's come off the bench here and is making things happen on the defensive and offensive ends. I'm impressed with the jumping ability of the UTEP Miners. Fans are not going to settle down now, boy. 18-15 scoreboard reading. Ball thrown away and out of bounds, and it will be given to New Mexico. You got the feeling that these fans are really into it. They are now that their team has the lead. Terry Stallworth has checked in for the Miners. He is a freshman, six foot four, from the state of California. And the Bear is not afraid to play freshman. Baseline right side, they swing it back outside, go to Leffel in the middle, turn around jumper. Too hard, rebound, Johnny Brown. We've seen that before, Carl Arkey. He's made a career out of that, Bill. Just a great player, knows his position, has good footwork in the right place at the right time. 17-16, scoreboard reading the Miners uh, now down by one point. And from the corner, we got a jumper over the rim, not good. And a fight for the rebound, taken out of there by the Miners. Uh, by the uh, Lobos, rather. And the ball is lost. It ends up in the hands of the Bear. And the Bear is going to make a point while he's holding on to the ball. He made a point by slamming it down that time. He thought that his man just didn't have as much right to go down the court and apply the pressure as the uh, offensive man did. Timeout called with timeout. We have 7.32 to go till halftime. 17 to Mexico and 16 for uh, UTEP. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network. 18-17, UTEP up. Here's a great defensive play. We'll watch it again. I'm sorry, this is the tip-in by Johnny Brown. The great play by Johnny Brown on the offensive boards as he puts it back in. Made a whole career out of that. Now we'll go to the other end. Quinton Gates with the shot goes up. And this is Stallworth trying to come down with it. And he bumped into Leffel. They charged. They said no foul. Even though uh, Stallworth came down without the basketball and came down on his rear end. Okay. Well, we've got a light bulb off on my scoreboard to my left. That's why I said 16 a moment ago. It is 18 for the UTEP Miners, 17 for the New Mexico Lobos. And we're at work for the Lobos right now, working outside. This is Scarborough lowering the shoulder. Can't go anywhere. Pinched off by the Jeep. Brown's pass deflected out of bounds. Tell you, Bill, the way that they're playing inside on that zone, they're going to have a very tough time trying to get it into Leffel. They're going to need that outside shooting that Scarborough was giving them earlier in the game. We're still in the first half with 17, 12 to go in the first half of the ball game. It's a one-pointer. Fast pass and taken by Brooks. Tried to feed it low underneath. Shots up. Not good. Whistle foul. Boy, they force feed it inside, do they not? They really do. It's going to be on number 24. Terry Stallworth, the freshman who just came in the game, but as we were saying, they pack it in very well with that zone, and then the guards come back to help out. So you've got five guys collapsing on whoever's got the basketball. Brown to shoot a pair. He misses the first. He, incidentally, is a 57% free throw shooter. And incidentally, they missed a lot of free throws last Saturday night in the last game against UTEP. A lot of people feel that's what really cost them the game. Free shot, converted. Johnny Brown has seven points in the game, and we are tied. Fast pass outside. We're working out with Hardaway. Jeep Jackson had Campbell open at the baseline, didn't go that way. 18-18 on the scoreboard, 6.47 to go in the first half. Sellout crowd, of course. That's all they've been talking about all week in El Paso and in Albuquerque. Nice move by G, backhanded pass, hard. Campbell shot, not good whistle foul. Boy, when they fire that pass, they, they don't love it. And it is getting very, very physical inside. We'll see it right here. The foul is going to be on Scarborough. But watch, after he gets the basketball off of the pass, number 20 really lowers the boom 
on poor Kelvin who goes down. He got it at both ends. Got hit by Campbell, fell on the floor, and got the foul as well. And it was Campbell last Saturday who was on the free throw line at Albuquerque in the Paper Cup game. His percentage is not great from the free throw line, but in WAC play, he is 8 of 11 from the line, so he's improving. 9 of 12. Tell you what, after uh, after that game last week, these free throws ought to be a piece of cake. What pressure. That's what he said. <laughs> Two points for Wayne Campbell. All right, it's now 20 to 18. UTEP out front of the ball game by a pair as we swing it down to Brown. Brown's the kind of a guy who can play outside and inside, and in professional basketball probably is going to end up playing guard. Lob pass, baseline, got a man open, Brooks scores. Nice pass that time to get it inside, and that was not wide open. That was a tough pass. Pair of 20s on the scoreboard. From the corner, Campbell, he'll go back outside. Jeep Jackson, looking, plenty of time on the shot clock. We're at 27 right now. Their We're front court right now has a 6'4", 6'7", 6'7", player. That's an awfully short front court for them, for the UTEP Miners, that is. Pass low over the head of the intended receiver, and it'll go to New Mexico. Referees really look at each other. You note know that? Yeah, there's some indecision here this afternoon as Dave Feidel checks in, Kelly Graves checks in. Kelly just celebrating a birthday, I believe, last uh, weekend. But uh, they're going to get some size back in there now for the Miners, Feidel and uh, Richmond. The two big guys are back in the lineup. But you're right, uh, the couple of times we've seen the officials look at each other and kind of wonder, well, what do you think? Well, I don't know, what do you think? Might be one of the negative uh, marks against using three officials. We've seen a lot of games where two work very well. And some where they don't. Outside, long jumper, not good. Rebound torn out of there very nicely uh, by Stallworth. And the Miners are going the other way with the ball. That's Gates number 11. And Jeep Jackson playing the point. They swing it over to the angle. Backhanded pass the other way into the post of Fidel. Fidel, as he makes a turn, has it stripped right out of his hands, Kyle Arkey. Double team work that time as Kelly Graves turned around and put the pressure on Fidel. Lawson wanted a shot, didn't have it really. Now they go inside. There's a move by Brooks again. Over the rim, not good. The opposite side rebound. Everybody can really sky on this UTEP ball club. I like that. Jumper, good from outside by Gates. For a guy who's 6'7", six, 6'8", six, he sure handles the basketball very well, doesn't he, coming down court and gets a nice shot off. Plays like a point guard. He is 6'7", a junior from Los Angeles, California. Right now, New Mexico in the red uniform. In the attack zone with the ball. Pass outside, this is Lawson. They swing it over to the angle right now. Little move in the lane by Lawson as he went to take the shot. He was hammered. Foul call. Parker checking into the ball game. We have not seen him in a game yet. A little more beef. Gary Colson says he needs it inside. This kid is 6'7", 240. There's the bear who's not 6'7", 240. Well, at least he's not 6'7", but uh, Gary Colson wants a little bit more beef inside, so he's going to put Parker in there, a freshman from Cleveland. And now they've got, let's see, a 240 guy in there, a 240 guy in there. And a little guy at the line. Lawson to shoot a pair, converts the first one. He has three points in the game. He is a sophomore. Most of these young men you will see again next year. Juden Smith, Johnny Brown will graduate. Final will graduate. This shot, not good. Rebound taken out of there by Jeep Jackson. Jeep Jackson's a junior. Wealth of talent in the Western Athletic Conference, particularly, of course, with these two ball clubs. Jeep Jackson does not know where he got his nickname. He said he's been called that all of his life. Jumper, soft, but not good. Rebound on the floor, big scramble, taken out of there by New Mexico. All right, back the other way. Long lead pass, they got the man open underneath. The shot is not good by Parker, gets it back, plays it up, scores! How about that? <laughs> Paul Lawson was just so happy with the pass that he made, and it was a sensational one, but Parker takes it inside. That's where that 270 pounds will help you, that muscle to get the ball back and put it up. Whistle, foul ball. Little muscling going on inside, away from the ball that time. 
He's got a few pounds on Fidel, but Fidel's got the experience. We'll watch the battle going on right here. Look at him. He grabbed his arm and then pushed him. And that's where a little bit of the inexperience of being a freshman will come into play. And, and said, foul me. <laughs> timeout called. With timeout, we have 3.36 to go till halftime. Scoreboard reads 23 New Mexico, 22 UTEP. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network. Carl Arkey along with Bill Howard live in the Special Events Center in El Paso, Texas. The score, it is New Mexico 23, UTEP 22, 3.36 to go before halftime. And the shooting, very even right now, 50% for both of those clubs. Neither one of them in the bonus situation yet, though. 16 fouls on both UTEP and New Mexico. Note that Brown has uh, four rebounds. He's the leading uh, bounder on the court. And not one of the big guys. He, of course, is 6'7", a senior. All right, inbounds for the UTEP Miners. Chief Jackson will go outside. We're working outside right now with uh, Mike Richmond. Now hands it off to uh, Juden Smith. Chief Jackson again. Uh, they're surrounding Fidel. Must feel like Custer. Ball knocked away. Whistle foul. Foul called on the Lobos. And now we'll see the one-on-one, -on -one, Bill, as that was Paul Lawson who got called for it. That's his first of the game. It'll send Richmond to the line to shoot the one-on-one. Mike Richmond, Philadelphia product, 54% shooter from the uh, floor, 6'9", junior. He'll be back next year. And, of course, uh, UTEP has a lot of undergraduate help, plus they've got the young man who transferred from Arizona State. Exactly, Chris Sandel, who just left the Sun Devil program, was their leading scorer and one of their leading rebounders. Decided he didn't like it very much in uh, Tempe land and came down here. He's going to play for the uh, UTEP Miners next year. Hamilton hits two free throws. And that runs the scoreboard now to 24-23 with the UTEP Miners out front by one point as the Lobos break the press with a good feed to Brooks. Fast bullet pass to Parker. Not the way and taken by the Miners going the other way. Juden Smith is open. He will take that shot. Not good. Rebound, Parker. Up the middle, not a Lawson. Scarborough not playing right now, and of course he was red hot earlier in the ball game, Carl Arkey. They want that outside shooting from Kelly Graves, but they get the turnover. Vital got that loose ball. Lob pass to the corner. Power move that time. No basket. Power move as uh, Hamilton took it right to the rim, and there's a whistle and a foul. Brian Parker very upset underneath there. That are very tired. We'll see it once again right here. But UTEP really putting the pressure on, getting back very quick. And it was Richmond who took it up and got hammered by Parker that time. And that is the second foul on Brian Parker, the freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. All right, uh, Gates goes out of the ball game and Clanton checks back in for the UTEP Miners and Winters also checks into the ball game for the New Mexico Lobos. We set up with number 50, Mike Richmond on the free throw. Uh, on the free throw line, that's right. Shot, good. All right, made it cleanly, and it is now 25-23 UTEP in front by a pair, 2.44 to go till halftime. Pressure on the ball backcourt. Broken very nicely. Lobos with the ball. They went to Brooks to break it up at midcourt. They had Johnny Brown wide open and didn't see him. He could have gone back door. Speaking of Brown, that is Brown with the ball right now. Playing outside. All around for Farmer. Good one. They got a man open. Ball knocked loose, but regained. Fight for it. Played up and in. Nice play by Parker. That's four points for Parker. Gary Colson's got to like that. I'm surprised he's playing Parker as much as he is. I thought he might play Leffel in tandem with his other big center, Sean Brooks. But right now, it's Parker and Brooks. We're tied at 25. Pass outside, Jeep Jackson with the ball, trying to penetrate, tried to pass, it's stolen by Parker, fed to the man in the middle, that's Lawson. Holds it up, they didn't have the fast break. Coming up late, Brooks. Winners, Lawson, working against the New Mexico uh, uh, defense. Brown outside with the ball, lob pass to Winters. Got the man open in the corner, passes a little high. Nice penetration. Tried to dish it off. Drop, picked up. Parker shot, blocked to the floor. Lawson shot, not good. Rebound taken out of there by uh, uh, Clanton. One of the more physical games I think we've seen this year, Bill. A move in the lane and a left-handed turnaround jumper by Richmond is good. 
That was a thing of beauty. Just a great shot by Richmond fading away. Five points. A move by Winters. Brooks in the corner, back outside. They set up once more. Pass off the corner of the bank board. Perham's out of bounds. Turnover. He was trying to go to his big man inside, and that time it just hit the backboard. Good idea, just didn't execute it very well. All right, Leffel checks into the lineup. We checked uh, Brooks out. Parker is still in there, playing a forward. A lot of size for the Lobos. Miners bring it up. It is 27-25 with the Miners out front by a pair. Jeep Jackson, shadowed by Lawson. Clanton with the ball outside now to Juden Smith. Lob pass on the alley-oop, doesn't quite work to the floor. Picked up, lost momentarily, but flashed outside to uh, uh, Jeep Jackson again. Off-balance shot, not good. Fight for the ball, owned by the team in red. The ball is knocked out of bounds. Knocked out by Campbell. But was that a display of athletic ability that time, just to keep the ball alive and inbounds and keep possession of the basketball? I think we saw some of the best playing right there by UTEP. That's why sometimes they call this game uh, ballet and sneakers. Great agility, body control. Good shot from the floor camera. Got to play for that last shot. Under 10 seconds in the half, Bill. Seven seconds to go till halftime. From the corner. Whoop, we got a collision, and we have a travel call. And Colson is really upset at the call. And I think he has a point on that one. I think the picture says it all right there. Before the Miners could get the shot off the horn sounds ending the first half of play. And at halftime, we have a two-point ball game. 27 for the UTEP Miners, 25 for the New Mexico Lobos. We will be back to take a look at highlights of the first half right after this on the KUTV Sports Network. Two-point halftime lead for the UTEP Miners, but that's not surprising, Bill. In 15 of the 99 games they've played so far already, it came down to a two-point decision. So this is nothing new, the fact that the Miners and the Lobos are playing another, well, another nail-biter here in the uh, Special Events Center. And here, of course, at the Special Events Center. As they used to call it, and uh, play for Hank Iba, Mr. Henry Iba, who stresses defense. He's taught it to his kids, and we see the defensive pressure right here. Lawson trying to go in, and uh, the big guy, House Parker, they call him and uh, Albuquerque can't handle it. The big block right there. They try to put it up again, and afterwards they come down with the rebound. They go down to the other end now, and Richmond, number 50, you'll see him. He's going to get the basketball at about the top of the key, and he's going to just come up with a beautiful shot. This is Jeep Jackson. Feeds it down. And a thing of beauty. And just like that, they have a two-point lead, 27-25 at halftime. They're a good ball club. They jump better than I thought they did. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Boy, the, just the athletic ability that they have. And a lot of their kids are only about six foot seven, six foot eight. They only really have the one big guy, and that's Dave Feidel, who's done a good job of scoring. But they really get off the floor. They put great defensive pressure on you, and they run the court very well. And uh, guys who have size also run outside very well, which is another surprising point. All right, we're going to take a break. Again, at halftime, 20. 27-25 with uh, UTEP in front of New Mexico by two. El Paso is an attractive campus complemented by an atmosphere that is multicultural and multilingual due to the proximity of Mexico located just across the Rio Grande. All 50 states and more than 60 nations are represented by the student body, nearly 15,000 strong. UTEP offers its students programs leading toward bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees from six different colleges and the graduate school. UTEP students are also part of the successful athletic programs the school has fielded over the years, most notably the minor basketball team, a squad coached for the past 25 seasons by Don Haskins, winner of over 450 games. The Miners have won three straight Western Athletic Conference titles and often earn national rankings. The University of Texas at El Paso, the far western component of the University of Texas... 7% from the floor for both teams. The uh, Miners have gone to the free throw line a little bit more, and they're shooting 70% there, but reboundings are just about even, turnovers are just about even, 
team fouls are just about even. The difference, it seems to me, is, is that the Miners are getting their scoring inside. Fidel has got eight points in the first half. Richmond has got seven points in the first half. And we'll show you some of the individual scoring in just a little bit. But it seems as though they're getting it from outside. Speaking of New Mexico, Scarborough with the eight early points from outside. Brown has warmed up of late, has seven. But the guys that they really want to get it from, Parker and Brooks, well, Brooks has only got three points. Uh, Parker's only got four points. And Leffel was scoreless in the first half. So the big guys are not giving them the big scoring underneath. As for UTEP, well, fidel has got eight. Richmond's got seven. And they're get, getting some good scoring from uh, Smith and Gates outside. So th both of these teams like to pound away inside. They'd rather go inside to get their scoring. And right now, UTEP is doing a better job of that. A couple of interesting coaches in this one. We're back getting ready for the second half tip-off, although the folks here in El Paso figure we could head for the exits and go home already because when the Miners are leading at halftime, and it's happened about 12 times so far this season, Bill, they go on and win the game. I don't think that the uh, folks from New Mexico are ready to pack it up and head for home just yet, though. No, not, uh, not Colson and not that uh, gang in the red uniform. Uh, it, it's a good ball club. There are two good ball clubs here that you will expect to be coming back next year, too, because the nucleus is there for two good teams uh, uh, a year down the line. That, that's why the WAC is so much fun to watch. All right, we go to work with the ball, the UTEP Miners, and with the lead, the UTEP Miners. Good feed, shot not good, volleyball around a couple of times, and we have Fidel with a one-hander. Ball on the floor along with the bodies, and we have uh, the ball going the other way now to uh, the New Mexico Lobos. I think uh, a couple of players had their hands on the ball as they came down and just gave it to New Mexico on the possession. By the way, this crowd up on its feet, they won't sit down until New Mexico scores its, or I'm sorry, the, the Miners score their first point of the second half. In the old days before the 45-second clock, that might have been quite a stand. <laughs> Bounce outside to Winters right now. Good outside shooter. Fast bullet pass low. Brooks' shot doesn't go. And the rebound, Fidel. That's exactly what New Mexico wanted, and they blew the opportunity. Juden Smith. Jeep Jackson. They play catch with it outside right at the moment. That's Gates. Nice fake. Shot. People can sit down. He was an All-America junior college player in New Mexico, and they really picked up a gem when they got him. At work at the moment, Scarborough, who had such a great first half. All right, it is 29-25. Uh, UTEP out front by four. From the corner, Scarborough, is he hot enough today? Picks up where he left off in the first half. He's got 10 points now in the ball game, and he has come along, as you said, early in the season. He was cold from the floor. Jump shot was on vacation. It has come back well rested. 29-27 scoreboard reading. UTEP out front by a pair. Ball deflected, but regained. Ball thrown behind that time. And loose on the floor. We have a whistle, and what is the call as both officials take a look? And there's a good shot. The bear standing next to the, the striped shirt. How would you like to try to make up your mind? Look at Lawson do the balancing act, throws it down. We don't have a good view of it there, but I think they're going to say that he stepped out of bounds, and it looked like Scarborough who stepped out of bounds. No arguments. Pass outside. Jeep Jackson goes inside, now to Fidel. They go back into the corner. That is Quincy Gates. Number 11, he's 6'7", a junior. Carries a 10-point average. Fast bullet pass low, and they go to a second pass. I thought he had a good shot. Lost on the floor, taken out by the Lobos. They're going the other way. Lawson in the lane, tried to dish it to a wingman. Deflected back out. Scarborough's there with the ball. Winters facing the basket, short. Rebound owned by the Miners, and they're on the attack. Juden Smith. Maybe should have shot that time. Whistle. I think that's three shots in a row we've seen, Bill, where they should have gone ahead and shot it instead of making that last little pass. We'll watch it again right here. Smith coming down, goes up in the air, and the defensive man was there. And a foul is called on uh, Juden Smith. So in a 29-27 ball game, the Lobos try to tie it up on this trip. Of course, hindsight is always 20-20, Bill. And sometimes they make that last pass and the guy's wide open. So you can't, can't fault them for trying. If I ever got that close to the rim, I let it rip. 
usually miss, too. That's why you rode the bench. Nice pass along the baseline, up <laughs> over the top <laughs> of the shot clock, and we got a jump ball. Alternate possession, it'll go to UTEP. This is David against Goliath. Oh, my goodness, Scarborough trying to go in there, and a 6'11 guy stops the 5'11 kid. David against Goliath. What was that game where you threw the ball over the barn to the guy on the other side? You didn't play it. We didn't have a barn. All right. You <laughs> didn't have one. All right. Missed shot and New Mexico. I'm a farm boy, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> Lead pass. Nobody there because he was on the floor. His body's on the floor all over the place all over this afternoon. That's time it was Sean Brooks who went down, and the pass went awry because he was laying on his back. New Mexico falls back on defense. The Miners to bring it up right now in a 29-27 ball game. Miners in front by a pair. Fast pass. That's Jeep Jackson with the ball. Into the corner it goes. Bullet pass low. Final had a turnaround but decided to dish it outside, and that's why Jeep Jackson. Jeep Jackson's been having trouble himself shooting this year. They missed Lester Goodwin, who gave him the great outside shooting from the point guard position, but that time Jackson hit the shot. Set up this time with Brooks with a little shot that's soft and good. Five points for Brooks. 31-29 scoreboard rating. UTEP out front by a pair. Jeep Jackson to Juden Smith. Between the legs on the dribble. Too hard off the glass. Rebound owned by Brooks. Outlet, Scarborough. Little pass that ends up awry, but picked up by Johnny Brown, and Johnny Brown knows what to do with it. And Kyle Arkey, we're tied again. We may be this way at the end of the game. In the corner, ball lost on the floor. Picked up by New Mexico, they're running. Johnny Brown's a man in the middle. He's close, shoots it too hard. Taps it up, not good, final with a rebound. Timeout is called. With timeout, 15-12 to go in the ball game. Scoreboard reads, twin reading, 31 for New Mexico, 31 for the UTEP Miners. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network. Johnny Brown came into this game averaging 19 points per game, and a lot of it comes off of, well, plays just like this. A sloppy little pass that time that got away from Kelvin Scarborough, but nobody comes out until Feidel just jumps up there at the last second to try to contest the shot. But Johnny Brown has made a career off of plays just like that. Shooting percentages update. New Mexico shooting 45% from the floor, Utah 44% from the floor. So still even from that, in that category at least. Both coaches have a tight rein on this game. Final corner shot on its way by Jeep Jackson short. Final good offensive board, not good. Rebound on the floor taken out of there very nicely by UTEP again. Juden Smith kept that one alive. And he went after that basketball that time, tore it down viciously from the backboard. He's a leader. There's that left-handed shot again by Richmond. He has 11 points in the game, Carl. They've got to get in his face because that is his shot. He'll shoot it all day. Hit from Philadelphia is a prospect. Winners facing the basket. Didn't have a shot, apparently. Moved by Brooks. Foul. Final got him. And that takes the crowd out of it. They were starting to get up and chant defense, defense. But the foul goes on number 33. That is Dave Feidel, and that is his first of the game. He was tailgating on that one. <laughs> Came in, and it's a shooting foul. Sean Brooks will go to the line. Brooks having his troubles today, not, not getting open quite as much as we've seen him in the past and having a little trouble shooting when he does get the basketball. Brooks, 10.9 average so far. Fans get up and make a lot of racket beyond the uh, glass bank board. And are they ever happy? They feel they were part of that miss. He's been averaging 20 points per game, we might point out, during the last four games, though. Good rotation on the ball. He picks up one of two as six in the ball game this afternoon. And it is now 33-32. UTEP in front by one. And Juden Smith is on the move. 
And he's matched up against Johnny Brown. That's a good defensive matchup. Final baseline left side, good. Ten points. He thought he got hammered that time. He wanted the foul as well as the basket. It is now 35-32, UTEP in front by three. They've led most of the way, but every time they get that three-point lead, back comes the uh, New Mexico Lobos. Ball stolen, stripped from winners. Jeep Jackson with the ball, tried to go to Clanton, his wingman off the side and missed him on the pass, or they just didn't connect on it anyway, and it's out of bounds. Gary Colson figures that's justice because he thought his man was fouled at the other end when they took the basketball away. 13.39 to go in this game this afternoon, and timeout is going to be called with timeout. 13.37 to go in the ballgame. Scoreboard reads 35, UTEP 32, New Mexico. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network. They say that the bigger the game, the better Dave Fido plays. Watch number 33 get the ball in here, loves to turn, face the basket, shoot it. They say he's inconsistent. They say he's up and down. I don't think so this year. Came in averaging 15 points per game, and he's got a real shot, Bill, of becoming the all-time leading scorer here at UTEP. If he can score something like 250 points during the rest of the year, he'll be number one on the list. They've had some great players at this school, too, like Nate Archibald. Uh -huh. Bad news, Barnes. we got to tell you a story about that a little bit later on. Little pass low. That's Brooks with a power move, and he scores two. That's the Sean Brooks we've seen before. That's the Sean Brooks we've come to know with the great moves like that. 35-34. UTEP in front by one. The ball skipped away from everybody. Out of bounds. It'll go the other way. Gary Colson happy with his defensive pressure that time, and Haskins trying to tell his team to calm down. Take it easy. Just work it up very carefully. 13 09 remaining in the game this afternoon. Winters penetrating. Block tried to feed inside. It deflected up in the air. Taken out of there very nicely by that man who's always there, Juden Smith. How's that for a pass? Keith Jackson for two on a great pass. Can you believe that nobody wanted Juden Smith out of high school? That's why the Bear gets things done down here in UTEP country. Takes kids that nobody wants. Turns them into great basketball players. Winners with a power move, and the shot goes awry. We have a whistle and a foul. And it's thrown against New Mexico. <laughs> 22. Brooks. Going to go on Big Sean. We were talking about Bad News Barnes. When he was being recruited by Don Haskins, they got into a free throw shooting contest. Bear says, I win, you come to Utah. You win, you can go anywhere you want. Guess who won? He's here. Or he was here. Don't get into free throw shooting contest with uh, Don the Bear Haskins, I guess, is the moral of that story. That's right. He can still shoot that ball. Nolan Richardson is another one who played here. And now look where he is. Head coach, Arkansas. Hardaway is that uh, number 10 on the floor right now. He is the freshman from Chicago, Illinois, and is the point guard of the future. Shot in and out, not good by Clanton. Rebound, and Juden Smith gets his sixth point of the game. He's six foot seven now, but coming out of high school, he was only six foot one. He does a job inside now. Biggest lead in the ball game, 39-35. A move in the lane, 39-34, rather. And from the corner, the shot's not good, and the rebound taken out by Feidel. 39-34, UTEP in front by five big ones. Hardaway outside with the ball. Not too many freshmen play for Don Haskins. And outside, Juden Smith knocked the bottom out of that one for his eighth point in the game. He's starting to assert himself now, and it looks like Gary Colson wants a timeout. With timeout, 11.26 remaining in the basketball game. 41 UTEP, 34 for New Mexico. And now, all of a sudden, the uh, Miners have taken a uh, commanding lead. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network. Nobody recruited him. But a former UTEP player saw him make moves like this on a New Orleans playground and suggested that he might want to call Don Haskins. Don Haskins is grateful that he did because moves like that are hard to come by. Kids who can make moves like that are hard to come by. Shooting update, 45% from the floor for the Miners. I'm sorry, 48% for the Miners, 45% for the Lobos. But the most important stat is that seven-point lead on the scoreboard for UTEP. 
New Mexico needs a basket right now before things get a little bit too grim. Outside Scarborough working with Winters. They go cross court now to Johnny Brown. Johnny has nine points in the game. His average coming in is 19.1. It is Brown with the ball now. Finding his man open, Scarborough, who's been hot in this game when he's had the shot, and he gets it again. New Mexico does what we said they had to do, get a basket on that trip. Takes a little of the wind out of the sail and puts the crowd back down in its seat. 41-36 is the scoreboard reading now with uh, UTEP out front. UTEP with the ball and the lead. Whack play. Special event center in El Paso, Texas. Final. Partially blocked. Fight for the ball taken out of there by the Lobos. That time, Leffel, the seven-footer, got in his way and bothered him, so it helped to have the big guy back in there, Robert Leffel. Seven-footer listed as a freshman. Just a growing boy. From the corner, they got Scarborough open again, and again he buries it. And he was wide open because that, that uh, growing boy got in the way of the defensive man who was trying to come out and take him. 41-38 scoreboard reading as New Mexico claws back into the game. This is Clanton with the ball. They go to Fidel again. There's the answer to a problem. Fidel, you go to Fidel, you go to your money man. And boy, the hand was right in his face, but great concentration by Fidel to get the shot off and put it down. Has 12 points in this one so far. And it is now 43-38. UTEP out front of the ball game. Winners low and fouled is Leffel. Fouled, I believe, by uh, Richmond. No doubt about it. Richmond all over his back that time. Mike is going to come out, be replaced by Campbell and Jeep Jackson, who come back in. They're going to go a little bit more speed and uh, sacrifice a little bit of size this time. That's Jeep Jackson. And there's Gary Colson, who's looking at a five-point deficit for his New Mexico Lobos. And we're at the 9.38 level in the ballgame. Scarborough flashes it outside to Leffel, who's about 40 feet away from the bucket. Scarborough again. Both clubs know what they're doing, don't they? Leffel, turn around, soft touch, not good. Tap up, not good. And we have a whistle, and we have a foul this time on UTEP. And Parker had a good shot in there, but it just wouldn't drop. Juden Smith, the guilty party that time. We'll watch it again. He's a great defensive player, and he's mixing it up with the big guys. The ball goes up. Parker has a good shot at it, can tip it in, and then it's Juden Smith laying the body into Parker, which doesn't seem fair. I mean, Parker's a much bigger kid. Outside it goes. That's Leffel out there again. The house. The house is the out. house. Middle of the court. Winners. Boy, did they go in tight. Ball slapped. Banged around a couple of times and blocked. Taken out of there by UTEP. They're going the other way. A drive. Shot by Hardaway. Not good. Whistles blow and a foul is called. Got to be on final going over the back. But I thought Gary Colson was going to have a heart attack that time. And I think he's right. That looked like a goaltending call. Basket interference. Whatever you want to call it at the other end. But Gary Colson just came right out of his seat. And he's furious. We'll show it to you right here. This is the end of the UTEP play where Fidel was going back over the back of uh, winners that time, and that was a, a just call. But I tell you what, I think they missed the goaltending at the other end, Bill. Brown with the ball. They swing it over now to Winters. Not taking that outside shot, though. Sometimes he has it. They want this guy to take it, and this time it ticks off the front edge of the rim. And boy, do they go up court in a hurry to Hardaway. Hardaway with a great penetration. Hardaway, the freshman. They say he's the fastest kid they've had here in an awfully long time. He's a true freshman and really the only true point guard that they have on this UTEP minor ball club. If that didn't look like a young Ricky Green. Interception that time very nicely, and the Miners are going the other way again, and this time they feed to Juden Smith. Foul. Basket. Does it count? Foul called, and the basket, I believe, is down. Or are they giving him two shots? Well, they can't. The basket went down. It went in. They give him the basket. It's just the one shot. And slowly but surely, the UTEP Miners are starting to put this one away. I'd like to see that one again if we have a chance. I don't know if we've got it on the replay. Just to make sure and make sure it was the right call. It was Scarborough who tried to set up. Beautiful pass. Look at the ball handling. Looks one way, passes the other. Ah, uh, maybe Scarborough didn't have his feet set that time. At least not soon enough to prevent the call from going against him. 
That's so hard to make that call. It really is. I tell you, though, I love the versatility of this UTEP ball club. They can power it inside, and you can tell that they can handle it on the break, the transition, quite nicely. Three shots, good. 11 points now for Juden Smith. I think if I were an official, that would be one call I'd just rather not have to put up with, but you must, of course, because this game is quick and fast. 48-38. I'll look at the other scoreboard. We got a couple of bulbs out here. 48-38. All right. 48-38 it is. 10-point lead at the angle. We set up with the Lobos, and Johnny Brown pumps one up that's not good. The rebound owned by Feidel. They say he's passive. He didn't look passive to me that time. Boy, he was really aggressive going after that rebound. Looked like the last angry man. Hardaway gets a lot of quality playing time, and Feidel sits outside and just buries it. 14 points, 12-point lead, 50-38. Winners inside, goes baseline low. Johnny Brown loses it. We have a whistle, and what is it? A timeout call. Timeout call. Players couldn't hear Colson begging for timeout. With timeout, 7.37 to go in the ballgame. Scoreboard 50, Utah 38, New Mexico. We'll be back on the KUTV Sports Network. Everybody is human. Everybody can make a mistake. But, Bill, I got to wonder how three officials could miss this play right here. Tries to go up with it. The ball is slapped and put on the backboard. That is goaltending. Should have been two points for New Mexico that time. Got to wonder how three guys can miss that. New Mexico will inbound the ball in their own territory. Boston with a lean in, doesn't shoot. Instead goes low along the baseline, and Johnny Brown knows what to do with it. That's his country. Going to be a heck of an uphill climb, though. 7.25 to go in the game and a 10-point deficit for the Lobos. 50-40. The uh, Lobos are going to have to shoot quickly, and, of course, they're going to have to make them, which is uh, difficult against a very good, well-coached UTEP minor basketball team. 7.09 remaining in this one, and a countdown to what should be a good finish this afternoon. Lobos taking their time now. That's Campbell fighting for it at the baseline. Lost. It goes out of bounds, and that is a break for the Lobos. They get the ball. They'll put it in play. Long, long lead pass. Boy, did they go down in a hurry. And a foul called. Foul called, I believe, on Hardaway. No, I think it's going to be Juden Smith this time, Bill, as Brooks came down with the ball and went into uh, Juden Smith. That brings the bear up off the bench. We'll watch it again. Smith. Well, we had Juden in front of him and Hardaway in back of him. He made the uh, block call, though, that time as, as Brooks tried to go down and get the shot off. That is 16 fouls on the minors and a shooting foul that time, so Brooks goes to the line. Or no, he won't go to the line. They'll just put the ball in inbounds from underneath the basket. All right, inbounds coming up now for the New Mexico Lobos. They swing it outside to Brooks. Lawson. They got the Twin Towers in there. They got yep. Brooks and Leffel this time. Scarborough's not in that lineup, and he's been hot, of course. There is a ball dropped by Brooks, fed up by Brooks, and score. Ten points for Brooks in the game, and it's an eight-point ball game, Kyle Arkey. Offensive foul whistled against Hardaway. There's the Bear. Bear can't believe it either. Neither of these coaches is happy, and I think the Bear has a good case this time, too. The defensive man did not set himself that time, did not have the position, did not have the feet set. The Bear is growling. The Bear was throwing laser beams. <laughs> Ball almost lost by New Mexico. That's something they cannot afford right now. It's a mistake, a turnover. Lawson doesn't have a shot. That man does. That's Johnny Brown, buries it. They're coming back, Bill. Six-point game. Ah, this is what it's all about, Carl Arkey. That's why you sell out down here. Hardaway, the freshman. Boy, he's getting quality time, isn't he? Inside Feidel. Watch this man. He's not going to shoot now. He's going to take his time. 5.51 remaining in the game. And we're at 19 on the shot clock. Inside, Campbell, boy, can he get up in the air. Nice shot, Campbell scores two as four in the game. That's what happens when you're patient. You work for the good shot and you get it. He knew what to do with it when he got it. Winters had it stripped away by the Miners. 
Hardaway on a breakaway. Scores. Ten-point lead again, 54-44. And it's 5-17 remaining in the game now. Bullet pass, open, Leffel. Good shot by the big seven-footer. His first pass in the game. Parker to check into the lineup. That's what we've been mentioning. Leffel has been silent in the scoring category. They're going to put Parker in there and give uh, Brooks a bit of a breather this time. They don't lose much muscle, though. 270. That court is tilting down at that end. Maybe we'll call him the barn instead of the house. That is uh, a gate. Content to burn up some time now. Valuable time. Leffel, whoops. That was vital. we faced by Leffel, and I think that caused that shot to go awry. Made the turn and big body. I don't think he knew where he was in relation to the basket. I think he was lost that time. By the time he turned around and put the shot up, he was at a different place than he thought he was on the court. It went way off the mark. Outside, winners. Oh, intercepted by Hardaway. They feed down to Jeep Jackson. Lathrop scores again. Two breakaways have broken Colson's hard here. It's the defense for UTEP. It's doing it right now. It's not great shooting. It's just the tremendous pressure in the defenses and the turnovers they're creating. Outside, winners with the ball, trying to penetrate. Brown is open, squared away, gets the shot and makes it, has 15 in the game. 56, 48. 4.08 to go, and time now is the friend of Don Haskins. Loud pass, they go to final baseline whistle foul. Leffel got it. Good shot of the crew cut Leffel on your screen. The uh, Jim McMahon of college basketball, in terms of hairstyle, I suppose. Uh, but uh, that time... That time, he wasn't really paying attention. I was watching the battle between Feidel and Leffel. He took his eyes off the basketball, and then, too late, saw it coming in, and he just backed into Feidel. Good call that time by the official. That means, of course, UTEP gets the ball, and more importantly, they reset the uh, shot clock. Exactly. 45 new seconds on that shot clock. Time called. 3.57 to go in this game. 56.48. And now, Carl Arkey, first of all, of course, UTEP has a chance to burn up 45 seconds. And then, what do you do? I think it's a little too early to start fouling at will and at random. I think they're only eight points down. If they can create a couple of turnovers and put some pressure on them and, and stop turning the ball over themselves, they can make this thing very close. There's still enough time, and I think it may be too soon to do that. By the way, Bill, we'll be back down here next Saturday for another big ball game in the Western Athletic Conference. It'll be the Air Force Falcons taking on these same UTEP Miners who, with a win today, it would seem, could almost, well, maybe not almost, but take a very big step towards wrapping up the home court advantage in the WAC tournament. Of course, uh, BYU will have an awful lot to say about that, as will San Diego State and a couple of other ball clubs, Wyoming as well. But Gary Colson said if they lost this game today, meaning uh, the New Mexico Lobos, they would have to start thinking in terms of the WAC tournament on somebody else's court. That, that loss on their home court last Saturday really hurt them in this race for the WAC championship. You know, all, all the years that I have worked around basketball, high school basketball, college basketball, professional basketball, I have never, never seen uh, an interference call like that before. That was very strange, and I agree with you. I have never seen one either. Tur timeouts remaining. We've got UTEP with two, New Mexico with one. They will have to use that last timeout very judiciously, Bill. Inbounds, upcoming. As we mentioned, this, of course, resets the 45-second clock, and I guarantee you they're going to use quite a bit of it. <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. They got the ball back. Well, that time they lost it and it's taken out of there by New Mexico. They'll feed an alley-ooper that's tapped away and lost completely. And it's going the other way. And we got a layup and we got a slam dunker by Quentin Gates. He has six points in the game. This is not the time for alley-oop passes. You got to play solid fundamental basketball. Shot missed. Knocked right out of the hands of Parker. Picked up, however, by Scarborough. And a whistle and a foul. 
Haskins is upset, but can you imagine how Gary Colson must feel? He gets the basketball away from him. They're on a fast break. Looks like they're going to score and cut the lead, and they go to an alley-oop pass. I would have slowed it down. It really wasn't open for the alley-oop. I still like to know why they took that outside shot a moment ago. With I think the Bear would like to know, and I think that's why he's talking to Quentin Gates about that. Watch Lawson right here. Sure, he's got the man open, but not the alley-oop, especially not with a 5'11 player. Didn't seem to be the wisest decision, the best shot that, in that situation. Lawson on the line. The fans at uh, the baseline on up the uh, aisle really come down in a big hurry and try to uh, disconcert the shooter. Waving swords, wearing helmets. Lawson shot, airborne, in and out, not good, and the rebound is taken out of there by UTEP. That's the home court advantage. They needed those free throws. 58-48, it is a 10-point lead. UTEP with the ball. 32 seconds on the shot clock. 2.57 on the time clock. They're spreading it out, Bill. They're going to run the time off and spread things out on offense. 10-point lead. Vital clears it back out. We're at 17 seconds. Note they're not giving the foul, which I think is a plus. Ball deflected away and knocked out of bounds. That was at nine seconds as the ball was knocked out by New Mexico. And it'll be inbounded by UTEP. Eight seconds to go. They must shoot now. And that's what they do with it. How about that? That's the guy you want to have the basketball in his hands at this point of the game. And that's why he's a star. Because when it's in this situation, a guy like Johnny Brown or Juden Smith takes over. Soft shot is up, not good. Follow-up rebound is good, however, by Parker. Parker has six points in the game. And it is now 60 to 50. Ten-point lead, UTEP out front. 2-10 remaining in this game this afternoon in El Paso, Texas. Good wraparound dribble by the Jeep. And now this is Hardaway, the point guard of the future for the UTEP Miners. Because the Jeep is not a true point guard. He'll go back to the off guard next year. 22 seconds on the shot clock. Low. They work it inside. Hardaway's shot is good. It counts. He's fouled. And it was just this morning when I uh, saw uh, Don Haskins in the coffee shop. There's a replay. And I said, how about Hardaway? And he said, when he gets older, he'll be a good player. Well, he's getting old in a hurry. He aged this afternoon. I was going to say, well, they're going to have to start to come out and foul. But that was not the time when they wanted to foul. Not when the man's shooting. You want to follow, follow him when he's dribbling or when he's just standing there with the ball. Exit a three-point play as nine in the game. And it is now 63-50, 13-point lead. UTEP out front of the ball game, and New Mexico with the ball. A great shot by Scarborough. He has 16 in the game. Pressure on the ball, backcourt. They trap him, and the ball is knocked out of his hands, out of bounds. UTEP still has it. Inbounds, Final would toss it in this time. Jeep Jackson. Got a lot of pressure on him and his foul because of it. Going to have to start fouling when you're down by, oh, let's see, what do we got? An 11 point game now with 127 to go. They've got to start fouling almost every play. Take their chances with uh, UTEP at the line as a team. The Miners are shooting 65% from the free throw line. And as a uh, team, by the way, New Mexico shoots 61% from the free throw line. That is probably one of the weaknesses that they do have. Interesting thing about it is, Bill, is that the uh, team foul situation works against New Mexico right now. They've only got five, so they're not even in the one and one yet. They like to put them at the line and stop eating time off the clock. And gamble that they do not make the free throws and then get the ball back. That's one of the basic gambles you take in college basketball. Foul again. But that's only team foul number six, so unless they call it an intentional, they're just going to take the ball out of bounds. 102 remaining, 62 seconds remaining, Carl. There's a fight breaking out. There's some words between Final and Sean Brooks, and Hat Bear is looking on, but Final is upset. He's been John all afternoon at the big men for New Mexico. The Bear is out there right now. And hostility cease when the bear is on the scene. No, I think the bear is starting to give it to the official now. <laughs> well, he may be doing so to protect.
good ball player. The temper is flaring. Sean Brooks is going to come out of the game and get a Bronx cheer from the fans. And, oh, they threw something down. They threw something at Sean Brooks, and that was unfortunate. I hate to see that. Final may have his points, and he may have his his gripes, and, and they may be well-founded, but we sure hate to see anybody throw anything here today. I think most people in this area had enough of that last week in the unfortunate paper cup incident. All right. Play ball. They go to work. Inbounds now for UTEP. They go into the corner to Jeep Jackson whistle and a foul. Johnny Brown commits the foul. That'll put him on the free throw line now. At long last with a minute to go, it may be too late. 63-52 scoreboard reading. They'll set up with Jeep Jackson on the free throw line. I mentioned earlier in the telecast that he does not remember where he got the nickname. I think he prefers it to Hernell, though. I don't know if he knows where he got Hernell, other than his parents. I'll tell you what, though, if he makes it into the NBA, what a marketable name. Yes. You got Refrigerator Perry with the Bears. Can you imagine Jeep Jackson? Good shot of Jeep right now, looking rather happy. And well, he should. Makes two free throws, has six points in the game, and it is 65-52. UTEP out front of the ball game. Scarborough, a little wraparound dribble, lost it. Picked up by UTEP. They're back on the attack, and it's been a tough day for uh, uh, the Lobos. Tell you what, Gary Colson, I think, wants to get the tee and maybe get thrown out. He walked out on the court when the ball was in his end. Got and, another foul. And actually, he should have been tossed because he walked out of the box and walked onto the court. I think Gary is just kind of asking for it now. He's very upset. Some of that feeling probably, of course, is brought in from last week, and you can understand why he was disappointed. Exactly, the re residual feeling over the devastating loss last week and then to go down by a, a big loss here today in uh, El Paso. Campbell's free shot is not good. They call that intentional. Not missing the uh, foul. Again, his shot is airborne. This one he makes. So he makes one of two and has five in the game. And it is 66-52. And this is Lawson from the corner. Now inside. Good feet up on the shot. Not going on the rim. Not good. How about that for a follow-up? But it went awry. And the Lobos are back on defense. And the Miners have the ball and the lead. And we're at work right now with 23 seconds to go. The shot clock is dormant. 17 seconds to go, 66-52. We're singing amen here in the Special Event Center. Doing a good job of it, too. Foul call, Johnny Brown. Three seconds to go as John commits the foul. That'll put Juden Smith on the free throw line. Festive air in the Special Event Center in El Paso, Texas. Look at that uh, free throw stance that he does have. Widespread, Juden Smith. Squares away all right, but extremely, uh, feet extremely wide apart. He went up and pushed him, he'd fall right over. I've seen a putting stance like that. Didn't work either. Shot good. 15 points in the game for Juden Smith. 68-52, and the fans sing on. A drive by Scarborough. It is good at the buzzer, and the combatants shake hands. Gary Colson, Don Haskins, and walk off the floor, and UTEP has won this basketball game. There's your score on the screen. The UTEP Miners coming up with a big victory this afternoon. 68 for UTEP, 54 for the New Mexico Lobos. We'll be back to recap in just one moment on the KUTV Sports Network. Who we hope will be joining us in just a few moments. They put New Mexico in tough shape right now. Their record is now five and four. Exactly, and it puts it really puts UTEP in great shape. They're seven and two on the season in the conference standings, and they're in terrific shape. BYU doesn't play again until about the middle of the week, and it'll be up to them to see if they can uh, keep up with 
the UTEP Miners who come away with a big win this afternoon. The crowd cheering because we've got the Bear and Dave Final coming out to join us. All right, a couple of stars, one on the bench, of course, the, uh, the creative genius of this ball club. And the Bear, Don Haskins, Haskins yeah. welcome, Coach. Thank I'd you. like to ask you, number one, did you expect this ball club to be as good this year as it turned out to be? No, I didn't, because we, you know, we had a couple guys back, and then we lost uh, Kevin Hamilton uh, in August. Now we've got him on our squad, but Kevin uh, had a knee operation. Um, most of the guys are playing. You know, Jeep had played a lot of basketball last year. Quentin Gates had played a lot of basketball. Uh, but we had uh, Tim Hardaway, who played a great game, I thought, in the second half today, come in uh, uh, as a freshman. Lemuel Clinton, who came here as a walk-on, has really come through. And, of course, uh, Mike Richmond has played extremely well for us, and he was red shirt last year. I asked you this morning uh, how good Hardaway was, and you said he's going to be all right when he gets a little older. He got old in a day. Yeah, he did. I'll tell you what, uh, he's, uh, he's really a, a, a fine young player and got a lot of heart. Um, I tell you what, this New Mexico team is really a good one. We had a real good chance to lose today, and I felt that our guys were playing as hard as we possibly could. They executed well. They rebound well. Uh, they're a well-coached team, and uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, in the games that we've won against them in the last uh, three or four years. Coach, I think if anything, it was your defense that really did it for you in the second half. You forced the turnovers and got the easy basket. We did. We forced a bunch of turnovers. Uh, our guards made some steals, and uh, I felt that most of the day we kept it out of the lane. Uh, Scarborough's not supposed to, um, he's not supposed to make that many shots, uh, <laughs> but he did. He played a great game for them. I have never, uh, one of the finest players I think in our league and how I've thought so for two years is Johnny Brown. Uh, he's a true gentleman and uh, he's always, I tell you what, even when they lost that tough one up there the other night and it really was a, a tough one, Johnny came right up and he, he always says something. He's, I, I hope he makes it as an NBA player. Uh, Don, you, we can't concede it to you yet in the, in the no, WAC because you've so. got a tough road trip ahead of you. I think uh, BYU might have, the, uh, have a little edge right now and of course uh, you know, uh, we've got uh, we've got three teams right now that haven't been beaten at home. Uh, the trip to uh, Utah to play BYU and uh, and uh, Utah, of course. Uh, uh, you know, right now we have uh, uh, you know this we got a, a heck of a ball club coming in. This Wyoming's playing real good. I really respect their coach. Every year, Air Force gets better, and their team it always knocks off a bunch of people. I, we respect them very much. Don, thank you very, very much, and, and best of luck. Congratulations to a good thank victory. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Don Haskins, coach of the uh, UTEP Miners, very popular guy uh, here in uh, El Paso, and well, he should be. And here's a popular guy, Carl Arkey. And a guy who's been to war this afternoon. There's a battle out there, Dave. Yeah, we really went in with the, uh, you know, we had to win this game. It was a must win at home, and when you win it at home, that just gives you another advantage in the, in the standings in the league. Let me ask you, got to ask you about what happened down there at the very end with you and Sean Brooks. Well, he, he was just frustrated, I guess, because, you know, he got, you know, loss up there and a loss down here. And, you know, all I was doing was playing ball, and he, you know, wants to take a cheap shot that's up to him. And, you know, I wanted to get him back, but I couldn't at the time. The intensity this afternoon, you're not surprised by that, are you, especially after what happened last Saturday up in Albuquerque? Well, every time we meet, it's a good rivalry. You know, they play hard every time they come into El Paso. And when we go up there, it's just as hard playing in the pit. So I was looking forward to the match, and it was a good one. Did you feel like you had to take more of the shots this afternoon down the stretch? You had to take it to the basket? Oh, when the, when the play, team's looking for me to, you know, score, I really, you know, take the shot when, I'm, when it's open. But we have so many offensive threats on our team that, it's really hard for just one person to be singled out as the offensive player. Well, let me ask you this. Do you feel confident but not overconfident now about the WAC race? Um, I feel confident. You know, we've been in this position a couple of times, you know, the last, over the last few years. And if we, you know, just play by the way we're capable of playing, I feel confident that we have a good shot, at least for a tie. What do you want to do with your life? What's your major? Well, I'm going to be graduating this spring in a, with a marketing uh, degree. And, I'm um, just looking forward to, you know, either getting drafted, uh, having a chance, and if not, go over to Europe. If, not, if that doesn't work out, um, start settling down. Glad you were um, fortunate enough to play for UTEP. Why did you pick UTEP to begin with? Uh, I like the style of ball. Uh, coach Hastings is a man-to-man -man coach. He teaches um, the intensity level of basketball and how to work the ball, and he, he really just a fundamental coach, and that's what I really needed when I was looking in 
from high school is a coach that's going to take a player and make him the best player possible. Does he yell at you once in a while? All the time, not only in practice, but during the games, after games, just all day long, every time he sees me. <laughs> and he did a little of that today. Dave, congratulations. Thanks, thanks on so a on. great effort, and thanks for coming by. Thank you. All right. Coach uh, Don Haskins, of course, and uh, Dave Feidel, our guest on the uh, post game. And it, it was a, a strange game in a sense because there were some key turnarounds that really hurt. It seemed as though every time New Mexico was in a position to come clawing back and get back in the game, they got within, I think, six points there in the second half midway through. Then UTEP would use that defense and turn things around and get the steals and come in for some baskets. And Juden Smith, we don't want to forget about him. He played a super game this afternoon, came on. I think he finished with about 15 points. Uh, four, Fidel had 14 points, I believe. So the two seniors and the two guys that they rely upon really took over down the stretch and did the job. Carl, I got to bring up a point because uh, basketball is a game of emotion like football. Uh, they have a tough game coming up next week, the middle of the week. Uh, they have a tough game against the Air Force Academy. Could be they might just overlook the academy, that kind of thing. That is the fear here in El Paso. They were talking about that in the Special Event Center before this afternoon's game, that with all the tough games they've got coming up, the one on Saturday might be very difficult for them emotionally to get back up for. Now, last year, when Air Force came down here, Air Force got up, I think, 13-0 to start the game. So we could have a heck of a game next Saturday here on the KUTV Sports Network. I just mentioned uh, That'll be, of course, next Saturday. But uh, we have a couple of good ones on down the line. This race is not over yet. We'll be in San Diego two weeks from now, then back to Wyoming. So Wyoming's going to have something to say about this race. BYU's going to have something to say about this race. Utah's still not out of it yet. So anything could very well happen. But UTEP appears to be in the driver's seat right now. Okay. That pretty much uh, takes care of our telecast this afternoon. Uh, I can't hear my producer, Scott, so... That's right. a, that's going to do it for us, Bill. Okay. We'll see you next Saturday on the KUTV Sports Network, Conference right here from El Paso. This afternoon from the Special Event Center on the campus of Texas El Paso, featuring the New Mexico.